Welcome back to the Circuit of the Americas as we get ready for a Brabham Fest. 13 Brabham cars and two actual Brabham humans. My dad started racing in the 50s and he was very mechanical uh, engineering minded and uh, as well as being a race driver. So when he left Australia and came over to England, he, he raced for Cooper, but he was also engineering the cars a lot. And his dream was always to build his own car. So um, after he won two world championships with Cooper, he left and they started their own company and they started to build uh, Brabham's. During the 60s, they became the biggest race car manufacturer in the world. Um, in 1966, he won the world championship in his own car, which is the only person ever to do that in the history of, of uh, motor racing. And they ended up retiring in 1970. Myself and my two brothers, we, we started racing and my younger brother David and myself had quite a lot of success and you know we both won Le Mans and, and uh, kept the name going. We made the one I'm driving green and gold which is the, the kind of the, the colours that um, you know my dad used to have you know on his Formula One cars when he was racing so um, yeah that, it's, it's a thrill for me because as I said I, I never really had the opportunity before and um, yeah and it's just it's just been a blast. A special moment then for the Brabham family, Jeff and son Matt, to race together in Sir Jack's legendary cars. Uh, I'm just here this weekend um, with, with Ron Hornig and my dad. Um, we're racing Brabham BT35s together. So uh, yeah, I, I, jumping in a Brabham race car with my last name on it against my dad is uh, pretty special. And uh, yeah, very grateful to Ron. But to be racing this weekend with SVRA and Tony having us all on board is, is pretty cool. It'd be interesting to see if we're still talking to one another at the end of the weekend. You know? <laughs> but um, I'll see if I can keep up because Matt is he's a, a fantastic driver. He's, he's a superstar in the making, you know, and uh, if I could just keep him in sight, um, you know, at my age, I'd be really happy. Paul Field waiting to pass and they've got 133 feet to climb. It's the Speed Tour from SVRA, the US National Vintage Series. And here we go. Side by side, two Brabhams and two Brabhams inside. That is such a cool shot. And yes, oh. Jeff taking a quick look and oh, Tonis popping out there for a moment. He now looks to the inside, locking up Matt Brabham. Just holds on to the lead, but I think Casamets may well go. Somebody going wide there, going to second place here. They're all jostling position as they go through two. Now let's watch the S's. This is where you predicted Matt might get it wrong. He is sliding, yeah, <laughs> that's for sure. That was, that, was, that, was, that was pretty smooth. That's Bruce Hamilton in fourth. Cassinets is second. Travis Engen, yeah, we do have Cassinets in second. This is going to be quite a race. Up through six and seven. We wait for them to pounce onto nine. And here they come. Down through 10, and now under braking, Cassinets has got a chance. He looks to the inside. He just needs to outbreak Brabham, and he got does it. just that and takes the lead. But now down the back straight, can Matt Brabham come back at him? I don't know. I think watching their practice, Jeff Brabham was faster, and Jeff is actually in the catbird seat right there in the draft as Maddie's trying to drag race him down. So Jeff and Tona should be a little bit faster than Matt. Casamets made that same move yesterday. And here we go, side by side. Look at this! Three-way battle for the lead, and here comes Jeff Brabham to take the lead at turn 12. Beautifully done. Casamets tries to hold on to second. And Matty's not giving him much of an inch, though, as he tries around the outside at 13, but he has to slot into third place. But Jeff Brabham now leads this race. And Tonus Casamis has got to be having the race of his life. He's a very talented racer, and to be honest, a lot of times in vintage racing, he doesn't have matching talent. Right now, this is the first race I've really seen with Tonus. If Dave Handy's not with Tonus, he has nobody to race with. So right now, he's got some matching talent and just having the time of his I life. I was about to say, he's enjoying every minute of it. As yeah. they dive through the 18, 18 now and up, up towards 19. Tricky Especially corners. A little bit of uh, mist down. And uh, look at them, glued together, the three of them, as they come towards 20. And they're going to have right. an almighty run up that hill now. And here they come. 
And Cassinets takes the lead as they cross the line, but Brabham takes a look to the right. And now it's the drag race up the hill, and Jeff Brabham's got the better line. Matt's going to go to the inside and see if he can beat both of them there. And does so. Or does he? No. Dad takes the... Uh, now, Tonus does not give an inch, and I hope Jeff understands that. I hope they've raced with each other enough, because Jeff is a gentleman racer. He's always super fast, but he's probably not used to other racers in vintage racing not giving an inch, and Tonus is a very aggressive driver. He doesn't put a wheel wrong, but he might get a little closer than Jeff is used to in vintage racing. What a spectacle. I tell you what, it's like uh, it's, it's like rolling back the years, no question about it, as we take a look at the that number 70. Hamilton. Yeah, Bruce Hamilton. And then I think that's Chalmer in that uh, orange car, or in that green car behind him. But man, that battle up front, we got to stay with that battle up front in this race. We usually like to highlight the whole thing, but this is just too good with the Brabham's racing, with Tonus Kassam that's just having the race of their life. It's Circuit of the Americas. Formula B was kind of a feeder series for Formula One back in the day. Yeah. And this is the American Formula One circuit. Yeah, exactly. And. Uh uh, a lot back in the day, someone like Sir Jack Brabham would uh, race both Formula One and po possibly Formula Two, and maybe some of these cars. They, 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 <laughs> wherever they could get a chance to, to run, they would. And here comes Matt Brabham talking of a run, and he looks to the inside at 12 to try and catch up with Dad. Oh, that wheel to wheel! That is really good racing right there from Tonus, aware of where where Matt is. They're not giving each other an inch. I wish I had cameras on the side of these cars because I'm sure that the wheels are getting locked in between wheels on this. Look at this race right there. Tone is taking the inside, but Matt's trying to, Matt has the faster line here on it. Look at that. Kazanets gets the lead for a moment, but look at these three of them and they are having a ball out there. Through goes Matt Brabham into second place and Jeff Brabham goes back to third having led for most of that lap. This is fantastic. And then look at this back backpack of four right here. Yep, another good group of racing. That's what I love about racing through the group. And there we go. Three at the end, too. So that's Travis Engen there with the uh, Chevron with the big orange Dayglow nose. Ron Hornig is leading this group. I think that's for fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth place. But here we go. Back to the leaders. And I'll tell you what, they're putting in respectable laps. The 217, all of them in the 217s that time. Side by side again. The two go up the hill. Cassinets on the inside has the better line. Matt will try to go high and wide and do the switchback, and he may just get him. Jeff's waiting to pounce himself, but it's going to be Cassinets going under the bridge and in the lead. But here comes Matt Brabham through the S's. So these are open wheel cars, no downforce except possibly the mirrors. <laughs> and uh, really, really difficult to drive, but a lot of fun. Equally yoked cars out here. Well, I'm glad they used the mirrors for downforce because you can't see through them. Yeah. <laughs> Matt Brabham is now in the lead. How many lead changes have we had in this group of three? It's insane, isn't it? It really is. I bet you the Cahill staff right there watching Tonus are just going crazy watching him race. They never get to see him race this hard with people. Usually he just takes the lead and just runs with it. I've never seen Tonus have this big a battle in Formula B. It's very exciting. Tonus Kassanets now looking for the draft and gets it. Goes to the inside now as they approach turn 12 and should take the lead ahead of Matt Brabham. Jeff Brabham just waiting here for his moment. Still plenty of time left in this race. Casanets does take the lead through 12. And ladies and gentlemen, that lead car you're seeing right there is for sale. You can contact <laughs> Tonus or Cahill. So if you want to race with the Brabhams, you just buy that car. You know right now it's fast. It's set up correctly. The paint job on it looks Concord winning show car, but obviously it's got speed and power. And David, if you're watching back in the UK, come and join us. That's David Brabham I'm referring to, of course, the ex-Formula One driver. And I'm sure he should join his brother, his uh, fellow family members, don't you think? Oh, that would join be Join his awesome. brother? Yeah. And I, I love listening to that story from both of them, talking about how Sir Jack, their father, Jeff's father, was one of the most unique drivers in the world of motorsport, racing his own chassis to a world championship. Never been done and never been done since. Amazing. That is amazing. So Schillingberg, man, really just working his way through. He's in the white car. He's passed two cars in this lap. And look at this. And Here we go again. And back into the lead goes Matt Brabham. It's just, it's almost a battle of drafting right now. There's two great drafting spots, the main straight and then that back straight. 
And basically, whoever is just in back, watch this though. Tonus is going to try to do something here at the S's. And if Bernie Eccleston's watching, uh, he, of course, ran the Brabham Formula One team for many a year. Maybe Bernie should do some historic racing. Yeah. He used to be a racer himself. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, Bruce Hamilton. He's in a 1970 Brabham BT36, racing with Cahill. Bruce is a longtime racer with us. He races an Indy Lights car, I believe it is. He races in uh, LMP3 with IMSA. He just loves racing. Now, of course, we mentioned the bragging rights, and uh, there was no question right from the get-go, right from the announcement that the father and son team would race against each other in uh, actual Brabham's, that they certainly started getting uh, bragging Jeff. rights going. And, and Jeff is not giving in, and I think he's being the wise one because there's only s still six minutes to go, and look at him side by side now, the three of them, and now here comes Jeff again, challenging for the lead, but has to settle for second place, but gets past his son. Tonus. Did not give Jeff a lane there. I'm no, not didn't. sure uh, Jeff's going to be real happy about that. That's not uh, Ooh, that's racing alongside. racing, not quite vintage racing. <laughs> we'll take it, though. Into 15 they go. Nothing between these three, but look how far they're pulling away from the rest of the field. A huge yeah. gap of some 30 well, they've seconds. Had, they've had such a draft advantage, too, just because uh, they've been racing so close. They're cutting a bigger Three hole through the air. So that's Chalmer McWilliams right there in the 91A. Bruce Hornig in the SVRA Blue, number 32. Or Ron Hornig, I'm sorry. He is uh, actually the person that made this Brabham thing happen. So, Ron, thank you for this. This may be the show of the weekend that you're providing for us, Ron. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Certainly going to get some headlines for sure. There's no question about that. Uh, a wonderful spectacle, and it isn't over yet because, look, Dad's in front, and here comes Youngster. No. Matt challenging side by side up the hill at the Circuit of the Americas. A classic move by Matt Brabham to take the lead. The student has become the master. Yeah. Well, you heard in that interview, Jeff was saying what an accomplished driver Matt has become and is becoming. He's only still in his 20s, and so a lot of racing still to come from Matt Brabham. He made a, a real spectacle in uh, Indy Lights. Everybody started noticing him, and of course, when you have a name like that, you're going to have a target on your back. It's like Mick Schumacher coming into Formula One, perhaps next year. Uh, everybody's eyes are going to be on whether he can be as good as his father, but uh, I think it's unfair. You can never really compare eggs to eggs or apples to apples, but anyway, we'll see. But it's always nice to have royalty oh, in yes. the series. Absolutely. And a super great gentleman. Perfect for his Look at race. that shot we're getting right there. You can really see the front suspension just really working. And now look at the rear. The BT-10. Look at those little axles coming out of there. What a cool shot. All right, so. Of course, the other one you've got to remember is the Kiwi, Bruce McLaren, yeah. who also uh, developed that's, his own car. That's the biggest gap we've seen between these three. Matt Brabham in the lead, followed by Jeff Brabham, Tonus Casamettis. Tonus Casamettis is kind of closing it up here. They're getting a little bit closer, but it looks like Matt Brabham might have found some speed somewhere. You really see the line as they go through 12 there from the drone, and it's starting to build, and, uh, and you also see how tricky this corner is. This 14 and 15 complex could catch you out if yeah. you uh, get it wrong. Notice the line they're taking there that uh, Going into 15, they're really uh, not hitting what you would consider the apex. They're, they're totally missing that one so they can hit a late apex on turn 15. Now coming through 18 and 19 here at the Circuit of the Americas. Misty conditions, if you're wondering. No, we haven't got a forest fire on. It's just mist. And coming out to the last corner now. Time running out, though. And uh, this could be the start of the last lap. So here we go, father-son battle. That's the son ahead of father Jeff Brabham. He looks Tonus in the mirror. Casamets. How far is that behind? Yeah, exactly. Look at that. You can see that. Look at the detail in that. And, of course, the green and gold is the traditional colors that uh, Sir Jack Brabham ran in his Formula One days, a three-time world champion. And uh, when you consider the, the likes of Ayrton Senna, were three-time world champions. Uh, those are those are rarefied air for sure. I got th the pleasure of meeting Sir Jack once. Lovely fellow and uh, very gruff. He didn't suffer fools, did Jack Brabham. Um, more of a, an AJ Foyt kind of character was Jack Brabham, but a fantastic racer.
And I just can't say enough nice things about Jeff Brabham. Such a gentleman. You know, I was a huge fan of his uh, growing up. I had him on a T-shirt with the Nissan. And, <laughs> and now to be able to hang out with him, they say never meet your heroes. But I, I, I don't think that's true. Motor racing is the one of the few sports that that is not the case. Yeah, he is such a gentleman, and, and it's rare not to see him at one of our events with Ron Hornick. And it's such a great pleasure to have him here, Jeff. Thanks for joining us in Vintage Racing. You're adding so much to this. At the moment, it's youth over experience as Matt Brabham leads the way in the all yellow. Brabham getting a little bit squirrely there under braking. He's pushing on as Dad puts the pressure on. Jeff Brabham, former INSA champion and Le Mans winner. Overall Le Mans winner, I may add. Bathurst, which is just yes, crazy that Bathurst. that's a real track. <laughs> if you've ever seen it or played it on video games, I can't believe the people race that. I know, it's incredible. Isn't it? But at the moment, the control of the race is with young Matt Brabham in the BT35. He's found some speed in the last two laps and has pulled a gap. I wonder where he's doing that. Well, there's going to be one more lap by my... Uh, estimates yep. because we've still got 120 on the clock and that's enough for another lap as they come round to and what has happened because i know yep. the crew last with lap. The, that's the ll means last lap sign i know the crew of both ron hornick's crew and cahill have put just enough fuel to finish the race so now the cars <laughs> are as light as it's probably the fastest that they'll be their tires may have worn out just a little bit let's see if jeff and oh and we got some uh lap traffic that they're going to have to contend with through these S's before turn 11. That's going to be difficult. Now, if Jeff's going to put some uh, pressure on his son, where's it going to be? Or will this bat marker come into play? Look at this. It's going to slow Matt yeah, down that's here. Gordy Good. That's not a great place to pass, but if he can get past it. him, that there he's going to give some room between them. Yeah, he's getting out of the way, though. Yep. Yeah. Thanks, Gordy. Great job. He was aware. They were showing the blue flags. Into eight now, and now up to nine. This is all uphill, this section. It's deceptive uh, in terms of just how much the undulation is as they come down from 10 and into the flat part of the circuit, which is turn 11, and then it's heavy on the anchors. And now Jeff Brabham is under a lot of pressure again from Tonis Kesmetz. Kesmetz. And he's going to have the draft here as they go down towards 12. At the moment, Matt Brabham has got control of this race down past the RV park. Morning, everyone. Great view from the RV park. Sure is. Look at Tonus looking to the inside at 12. And he's going to try to take Brabham to second place. Tonus is. And has he got him? We're watching Matt as we should be. But I wonder who's going to be in second when they pop out through the stadium section. Well, at the moment, it is Kesemetz, yep. but here comes Brabham again. Jeff Brabham on the run, looking for a 1-2 for the Brabham family. He's going to try an over-under here, I think. He takes the later apex. Tonus takes the defensive line. He's got a couple more corners to make him stick, but it's going to be Matt Brabham for sure here in the final run for the Brabhams. 13 Brabhams involved, 15 if you count the two live ones, and that, of course, is Jeff and Matt. And it's going to be the youngster, Matt Brabham, Continuing the legacy of the great Brabham family here at the most modern circuit of them all as Matt Brabham takes the checkered flag at the Circuit of the Americas. Kesevitz just holds on oh. to beat Jeff Brabham, who takes third place. Great racing between all three of those. They were stuck together like glue in the three Brabhams, and it is a one, two, three for the Brabham name. A tenth of a second between second and third. That is good racing. It's great racing. That many Bruce miles. Hamilton takes fourth place in the BT36 Brabham. And the first Lotus, or the first other mark, is the Lotus 41C of Chalmers McWilliams. Don Hovel is his mechanic, legendary Indian mechanic of Bobby Rahal. Yep. So he's here this weekend, too. You never know who you're going to see in these <laughs> paddocks and grids. We had Willie T. Ribs walking around yesterday. It's really fun. Look at that father-son. What a moment. Giving each other uh, high fives, if you will. Air high fives. Nice job. That was quite a race. Tonus, Kassinets, Cahill, you've got to be ecstatic about that.
race right now. One of the most fun I've had for oh, a long time. Good to hear. Thank, Thank you. you. All done. It was like that every time. Yeah. So Tonus and Jeff, we'll get Maddie in here in a little bit. I've been doing this for 10 years. That may have been the best vintage race I've ever seen. <laughs> Tell me about your, your experience, Jeff. Yeah, it was it was just so much fun. You know, we're all pretty equal out there and uh, and we were racing hard and uh, I hope we put on a good show because it was certainly a lot of fun behind the wheel and you know, Tonus is a great driver and obviously, you know, Matt, I don't he speaks for himself and uh, just for me, just an old guy to be able to keep them in sight. I'm pretty proud of that. So we'll, um, yeah, hopefully we can do this again. Oh yeah, I hope so. Tony, <laughs> tell me about your race out there. Yeah, I mean, my, I haven't had that much fun for a long time. And to split two Mercedes is like this. Sunoco Fool is doing a really good job making power. And uh, yeah, I enjoy driving with him. He's a very smart, tricky old fuck, so it's, <laughs> It's a lot to learn from him. So is your car still for sale or did you have too much fun? It's off the market. Is it? <laughs> wow, that's good news. Yeah. Awesome, thank you.